Hey guys, so today we're going to be working with MaxMSP to create a basic movie player uh, that will play uh, various movie files that we've recorded uh, in either random order or if we bang um, those movies to, to actually start playing. Uh, before we start, I wanted to show you guys that I had downloaded uh, some movies uh, from the internet. In fact, I used QuickTime to just do a screen capture uh, to pull these in and set them up as 1280p files so they're all identical in size. Uh, I'm going to show you how I did this just uh, in general uh, right now. Um, what I've done is just found a video on uh, YouTube that has some lightning. I thought that would look really nice. Uh, you can see it also has some sound. And what I'm going to do is now launch a uh, QuickTime uh, player and I'm going to go up to the file uh, new screen recording menu and then I'm going to set this up uh, to to record. Now you'll notice down here uh, we've got some possibilities. Uh, the one that we're going to be using for the class is the um, the actual cropped selection record selection selected portion but what we're going to do is we're going to modify this location so that it actually encompasses just this part of the video that we want and in this case we just want the entire screen I'm not worried about this because it'll go away once I start playing but this is the part of the video that we're going to be recording today if it were um, a different part or if you just wanted something smaller you could do that as well uh, another thing you're going to want to do is make sure you turn off the microphone because you don't want any of the the sound to be recorded so I'm going to put none here this way your video is just pure video and nothing else and then finally, all you have to do is hit the record button and it will start recording what's in that space. Now we're recording right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click back here and start the video playing and let it just actually keep recording. So you can kind of see that we're gonna get a little bit of video. So we'll take about 20 seconds of this. Um, Sometimes when strong conditions are just right, you might be fortunate enough to witness a So when we're done, we're going to hit the button up here with the little circle and square to stop the recording. I'm just going to stop this so you can hear me. Uh, and even though we heard sound, you'll see that this video does not have any sound playback. You can kind of see my mouse moving in this frame. You can see me hit the play button. And from this point on, we kind of want only this part of the video. We don't want the part with the mouse in it. Uh, so let's go ahead and pause this here. And I'm going to go Command T or Edit and the uh, number, the word is Trim. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to use QuickTime to actually just get rid of my mouse movement, the play button uh, going away so that we're going to start right there. And then we're going to end, I guess, right, right before that lightning comes in here. And hit the trim button and now we have actually something that starts uh, right here and then ends it's about 20 seconds like we had talked about finally the last thing i want you guys to do is go to file export as and then select uh, 720p this is going to make the video a little bit smaller we don't know what we have currently because it's just a random shape that we've selected but by making it 720p it automatically makes it um, 1280 by 720. And I'm going to title this movie six because we need the number six dot mov and put it in the folder max movies. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to export this movie as uh, a smaller uh, movie. Now, if we want a, this original one to keep it uh, again, when we close the window, we'll be asked, do you want to keep the original? Uh, for our case, we're not. So I'm just going to delete it and remove it from my desktop. And that's how you record a movie. We're going to go ahead and uh, start uh, working with these movies in Max. So we're going to go to our Max uh, uh, program and we're just going to create a new patcher. Uh, and I'm just going to open it up. And uh, what we'll be working with today is a program in Max called Jitter. Uh, Jitter allows us to work with uh, visual uh, matrices of uh, which we call movie files or photos and those kinds of things. Uh, just so you can see what a jitter uh, matrix looks like i'm just going to create a new jitter matrix j-i-t dot m-a-t-r-i-x and i'm going to go ahead and option click on it to open up its help file just so you can see what we're dealing with now a matrix in this case five by five uh, pixels is 25 a uh, grid of 25 cells and you can kind of see that each cell has four different possibilities it has a blue that goes from 0 to uh, 255 and you'll notice that cell coordinate 00 is in the upper left hand corner whereas 
five, four, four is in the bottom right hand corner. And if all the blue pixels are at 255, this is the color we get. Now, if we mix a little bit of green, we're going to get some cyan. And if we mix a little bit of red, we're going to get a gray color. And you can vary the amount of colors or um, the things here just by moving the sliders on this pack cell. But you get the idea of how this is nothing more than a plain a grid of five by five numbers, uh, each one with a four dimensions, alpha, red, green, and blue for the channels. And what you get when you, uh, you do this with a large amount of uh, data is something called a photo, digital photo, or a movie. And again, this is only five by five, so 25 pixels, but uh, your cameras and your phones obviously work in millions of pixels. And so, uh, but the concept is the same. Each pixel has a location and it has four possible values for each of these different channels. So knowing a little bit about matrices, uh, let's go ahead and get started because we're gonna be working with video. So let's go ahead and start with our um, N for new and let's say JIT dot uh, movie and what this will do is will allow us to read a movie file from one of our movies that is in our folder now in order for us to find those movies we'll need to tell Max where to look and so before you start uh, one of the things you want to set up uh, is the option file preference and actually set the user path which I already did here so I'll remove it so you can see how this works I'm going to hit the plus button and choose that folder that has those movies that are on my desktop. Now if this folder moves to a different location or if this folder is renamed, uh, your patch will stop working. So be really careful not to move the folder once you've got a place for it and do not rename the folder. And it will look on the desktop for that folder and the subfolders within that folder for your uh, movies. Let's option click on this little uh, jit.movie function and let's see what we've got. Uh, we have a read function or a read message and that's going to be a feed into the movie and then we've got a start stop which seems pretty clear and then a little play bar for controlling the movie. What I'm going to do is just copy this play bar. I'm just going to copy them in the memory and close this window and then I'm going to paste them into my patch so that I have a starting point. So in order for this to work I'll need the player uh, to be playing so I'll need this little play bar. Uh, and I will need to pick up a movie. Now, read chicken.mpeg4 should work. And if I click on this, you'll notice right away that the movie is playing, but there's no place that it's playing to. So what we need to do is set up a little movie uh, lo place that we can actually play to. So I'm just gonna hit N for new. And this time I'm gonna type jit.p uh, window. And then I'm gonna hook that up to the jit movie. And lo and behold, uh, we have a movie playing of chickens because we've read that. Okay, uh, I can get rid of this because I don't need it anymore. Now, instead of read.chickens, let's change that to read1.mov, which is one of our movies that we put into that folder. And let's see if it's working. And yep, there it is. It's working just fine. So now we've got that movie playing. We could scrub it if we wanted to here. We could uh, have it just continue to loop which is what it's doing right now um, let's go ahead and bring in the other four movies so all we have to do is uh, option drag these three four five obviously you can automate this with a prepend and those kinds of things if you had a lot of movies uh, but for now we're just gonna basically set this up in a very straightforward and easy to understand way um, and not necessarily need to automate the actual movies. And you can see why I actually named all these movies something very easy like numbers because this will allow my patch to read those. So now as I click through these movies, you'll notice every time I click the movie starts over and it just shows each of these movies in succession. To make this a little easier for a possible patch to, to work with in a random fashion, why don't I just add a, a B for a bang and then we'll, instead of needing a mouse to actually push these buttons, we can have the bang do it, which for now would be the same thing. But when we finally start having like our notes or our other uh, elements 
banging these things, uh, this will automate the playback. But you can kind of see that the bang now works in exactly the same way as clicking on the word read here. Okay, this is great so far. Right now what we're seeing are 1,200 pixels by 720 pixels uh, horizontally and vertically uh, being shown at about 60 frames per second. Um, that's what we're seeing here and it's being played back. That's a lot of processing that's taking place on the CPU and uh, if you had a lot of these movies playing uh, you might notice and we will uh, you might notice a little bit of a slowdown in your audio patch. In order to make this a little bit better, what we're going to be doing is handing this off to um, our GPU, our graphic user processor, which we don't use an MSP. You don't use it to make new music, but we can use it to do anything visual. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this and we're going to pretend like this is a projector and we're going to project this on a surface, on, on a digital surface, uh, in the GPU world um, and in order to do that we'll need a little a world in which we can actually project this um, matrix onto as a texture uh, so let's go ahead and make a new patch and call it jit.world and you'll notice right away when we do this we get this window that pops up because this is like a portal to this graphic user um, processor so we're in essence we're seeing the GPU at this point uh, but obviously there's nothing there. Now you would think that just plugging this into JIT.world would actually uh, cause this to work, but instead it actually stopped the movie from playing. And you'll notice that uh, some things have changed. I'm going to undo that so that you'll see. You'll notice that this chord was green, and green means it's a matrix. It's that original JIT.matrix that we saw, which is just a bunch of numbers in a grid uh, with four different channels when we change this to and connected it to the world what we're doing now is we're projecting a texture or we're uh, onto this world and currently we do not have a texture coming out of this little guy in order to do that we have to add one more piece of information so we need to say jit.movie at which is an argument and then we have to say output texture and we have to enable this so we need to use the number one Okay, now you saw some things jiggle, and when we click the read buttons, we're still not seeing anything come out of JIT.world. And that's for one reason, we haven't turned this world on. So in order to turn it on, we'll need a toggle, T for toggle. We're going to turn that here, and then we're going to just click once. Now I'm projecting this texture onto this imaginary plane that's in this world. Um, and this world is a three-dimensional world, so I could have projected this video onto a sphere or a, a torus or something else. Uh, but for now, this is the most basic use of the GPU, is just to project this texture. Uh, just like you have a projector projecting onto a surface like the side of a wall on a building. Um, it's not the same thing as looking at it on your television or your LCD screen or your, your phone. It's a projection of um, the actual video. Okay, so we do have everything working really nicely. This jit.world, I want to give it a name uh, for the world itself. Currently, the name of the world is these numbers up here. So I'm going to call it like uh, screen one. And this way I'll know what it is. And if I spelled screen one correctly, S C R E E N, uh, it would be nicer. Now you'll notice when I click back here that the screen goes to the back of everything. And you'll notice I have to reinitiate the toggle to, to get it to project again. Every time I make a change here, I'm going to need to re, uh, restart this world. Um, but you'll notice that it's always uh, kind of going to the back if I click here. So we can actually uh, open up our references here. And you'll see for JIT.world, there are a couple of uh, references that allow us to actually uh, work with this uh, floating uh, image uh, much better. Uh, one of them uh, which we'll be using is uh, full screen. And so if I were to take this reference and just drag it in like this, you'll notice that I can actually toggle this full screen on right here. And if I were to check this checkbox, uh, this video would go full screen and then I would be stuck because I wouldn't be able to uncheck this checkbox. So we need some way of remote controlling this full screen checkbox 
so that it's, it can be toggled on and off. Okay, so what we're going to be using is a key function to trigger our full screen on and off. Now, I'm currently recording this using QuickTime, and if I hit the escape key, um, the escape key will actually uh, quit the recording. So instead of using the uh, escape key, I'm going to be using the spacebar key. But regardless, we're going to be needing a key function. So let's go ahead and hit N for new. So I'll click on my patch, N for new, and type key. And this will give us uh, the ability to read the keyboard. Uh, let's hit M for messenger so that we can see what we actually uh, get out of this. And we're going to just put this messenger tab. I'm gonna, just going to feed this into the right hand side. And then I'm going to hit the space bar and notice that the number 32 comes up. So that's going to be my uh, thing that I'm going to select for. Now you can select in two ways. Uh, you can use a route tool if you wa wanted to select various keys. Um, but for us, make it easy, we're just going to hit new uh, and then type the word select. And this is just going to select for one uh, specific number and we're just going to call it 32. So what's going to happen now is uh, if the number 32 comes in, it's going to select for that and push out a bang. I'm just going to visibly see that it's working and I'm going to hit the space bar. You see it's working perfectly. And now this bang is going to toggle the full screen on and off, but I need a toggle in order for that to work. So T for toggle, so easy. And then click the bang and hook it up to the toggle, hook the toggle up to the full screen, and hopefully uh, this will work. So let's take a look, spacebar, full screen, and notice no menu, nothing. Everything looks good, spacebar again. And that br brought it back to the main screen, but notice that this is still oversized. So when you do this sometimes, at least on my computer, sometimes you have to drag in the bottom right hand corner to bring it back in line. Uh, I don't know why that is the case. Everything still seems to work. But uh, again, it's, it has to do with something that happened. The, I'm not really sure how to get this back. I think it's stuck in the upper right hand corner of our screen. I think it might be an issue. So like for instance, if I put floating zero and then back to floating one, that just kind of brings everything back to the way it was before. And now I can just go ahead and hit the toggle again to restart things and now I have it. I have a feeling that somehow this top bar goes above here. But just so you know, it's just a matter of pulling this back in uh, so you can actually see it. Anyway, we have our full screen key selector here all set up as a trigger. Very nice, I'll just move that over here. Uh, that's one way to get full screen. Now, uh, let's talk about like randomizing some of this maybe. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just bring everything here down a little bit and I'm going to randomly select each one of these movies, uh, maybe one every two seconds. So when I say one every two seconds, you know right away we're gonna be using a Metro object. So new patch or new uh, a new little patch uh, window here and we're going to type metro and two seconds you know is 2000 milliseconds right so we now have a metro uh, that's going to count out every 2000 just to see it let's make a little bang let's make it nice and big so we can see very nicely and we're going to use a toggle to start and stop this very nice right okay and now i toggle it and every two seconds we're going to see a little bang so I said the word random, so we're going to new patch uh, here and type random. And we're going to give it uh, a number. And the number always in random is between 0 and the number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have five things, uh, but we're going to do between a 0 and 4, so random 4. And let's see what we get. I'm going to just hit message, put it on my second, and I'm going to allow this to push out some numbers and you can see we're going between 0 and 3 so random is 5 I apologize for that but now you'll see what I'm talking about it only has five numbers but it's between 0 and 4 so we're going to be selecting uh, between uh, 0 1 2 3 and 4 what do we use well um, we are going to use a route and you know that already so new patch n and then R O U T E and we're going to go 0 1 2 3 Four, and that's going to be it. We now have uh, four different uh, or five different outputs plus the extra one, which means whatever we didn't select. So let's go ahead and just plug all these guys in. Four, and that's number the fifth one. And now if we plug this in here, 
you'll notice that it'll bang. Oh, we got to plug that in here. Sorry, this is like our message. Message doesn't bang, it just shows us what's going on. And now you can see every two seconds, something is changing on the video. And then sometimes it doesn't change, uh, but it does bang. So you'll notice that uh, even if it's not changing, it's starting the video over, right? So let's, we can do some like tests and do other things to make sure that the video doesn't start over. But let's just increase this to five seconds. Uh, and then we'll just let it do what it's going to do. I'm going to restart the toggle there and that's it. Okay, so what we have now, if we look at it, is a patch that's going to uh, bang one to f uh, four diff or five different numbers, zero to four, and randomly select um, a movie to play, uh, depending on what we've banged. Uh, let's move some of this stuff out of the way now. The world needs to exist uh, outside of this patch, and I'm just going to move this a little bit up so I can grab just this part. So I'm going to be selecting just these these elements right here along with this little patcher window. In fact, I'm going to make this little patcher window very small uh, just so I can uh, see what's going on. And so this right here, I am going to turn into one single function uh, by going to Edit, Encapsulate. And what that does is it takes everything that was selected and puts it inside of this function. I need to give it uh, a name. So I'm going to call it uh, five, 5 Movies. And so if I were to um, lock this patch and double click this uh, five movies function that I just created, you'll notice that I have an input that comes in from the top. It's expecting uh, between uh, one through four, zero, one, two, three, or four, a number to be banged in. And if it gets banged in, it's going to output a different uh, video. Uh, and this is a texture because we can see it's blue. Uh, and so now I have, uh, if I unlock this patch, you see I've taken up a lot less space on the desktop. And if I wanted to, I could create multiple uh, patches like this. I could actually just take this and option drag it. And now I have two potential movies coming out. You'll see I'll bang two different random numbers here. Uh, in order to make two different random numbers, I'll have to actually have a second random so that the numbers are actually different. And to see what's coming out of each one of these, if I wanted to, I could just make a new uh, N and then uh, JIT.P window. Uh, and I'm just going to duplicate that just so you can see that there are, in fact, two different videos uh, now being uh, banged at the same time uh, from these two objects. And you can kind of see now if I wanted to, I could actually make this uh, a total of four if using uh, two more different randoms here. Um, and I think you're starting to get the idea that we're going to be able to now start mixing these things um, together. Now, some of these windows are going to, some of these are going to bang out the exact same number. Uh, one way to fix that is to, instead of just doing five, four different random elements, you could do a random number and then uh, uh, actually add to that in a modular fashion so that every um, every video would be random for the first one but then sequential for the second. Uh, so for example um, all we need to do is add a new, pa a new EXPR expression and I'm just gonna leave it blank and get the help file so that I can show you uh, the modular area. The module um, is this uh, percentage sign and what happens is as soon as this number reaches 10 it jumps back to zero so it's like a clock uh, so instead of 10 what we would want is the number five here and what that should do is that when we reach the number um, four and then number five it'll go back to zero which gives us the the numbers that we need so we're just going to paste that in here and then what the, the idea is instead of three more randoms here what we'll do is we'll just add uh, one to this um, for each of the additional ones. So add one, add two, add three. Uh, so we could just do a simple plus one and then do it plus two and then a plus three. And so our random numbers are going to be added, but since we run out, if the random number was five, obviously we wouldn't want. Um, 
that number to uh, actually be 5, we want it to be something under 5. So we're going to put this expression for each one of these um, videos like this. And that should do it and uh, keep us within. So if the number is 6, it jumps to 1. If the number is 2, it jumps to 4. Uh, if the number is 1, so you can kind of see how this uh, cascades everything down nicely and uh, we'll just put these here so that you can see how they're working and now uh, we've got the numbers that we want to bang and we'll just put them in here and now you'll see all four videos are going to be on the next bang each one is a different video so everything is always going to be uh, something new on this plane here